British Columbia Premier David Eby and his NDP party are absolutely falling apart right now. They assumed that they could do and say whatever they wanted and they would still win the next provincial election. Nothing was going to come back to bite them because obviously we're so far ahead in the polls, BC voters will put up with anything. They didn't realize that their voting base was completely hollow. People were only selecting the BC NDP in the polls because it seemed like it was the only party that could actually win the next provincial election. And a lot of people tend to bandwagon. They want their MLA to be part of the government. So even maybe moderate conservative voters were willing to say that they were going to vote BC NDP provincially. But then the federal conservatives started getting extremely popular in British Columbia. And what never ends up holding up well in the long run in politics anywhere is split ballots. People tend to vote the same way on federal, uh, provincial, and even municipal levels. They vote conservative down line, they vote progressive down line, they vote liberal down line. And so what David Eby was relying on is that a lot of people who are going to vote federal conservative, which tended to be their more stronger preference between their preference between the NDP and the, the federal conservatives, is that he was relying on a lot of crossover voters who liked Polya, but were willing to vote for David Eby, even though the two men were complete opposites. Really, people were only selecting Eby in these polls because he seemed like he was going to win. And now that the opposition scene in British Columbia is becoming less cluttered and the BC Conservatives and John Rusted have obviously defeated Kevin Falconson's BC United Party and are moving on to beat the NDP, now voters are all starting to consolidate towards the BC Conservatives. It's not just that John Rusted and the BC Conservatives are taking votes from the United. They're also taking votes from the NDP, all those people who are just defaulting to them because, you know, David Eby is going to be our premier anyway, so I guess I can say I voted for him. That was never going to hold, especially with the carbon tax issue and the drug issue. And so now, since the, the last Main Street poll that came out showed that the BC Conservatives were down six points on the NDP. Not an amazing result, but it showed that the BC Conservatives had momentum. And now in this poll that Main Street just released today, the BC Conservatives and NDP are now tied at 38%, with BC United at 15%. And before I move on, I just quickly want to urge anyone who lives in British Columbia, vote BC Conservative. I don't care if in your downtown Montreal or Victoria riding, technically the United polls better in your specific area. It doesn't matter. In three months, that's not going to be true. Vote BC Conservatives because it's only, you're never going to have this strange victory over the BC NDP where it relies on people in rural areas and suburban areas voting BC Conservatives, but in urban areas, you got to vote United and that's how you get rid of the BC NDP. The only way that the BC NDP are going to go away is if the BC Conservatives get enough support that they can smash them. It's not going to be this divided up victory like we've seen in the past where two parties in different parts of the province need to kind of team up in order to win enough seats to overcome the bigger party. It's not going to happen here. Vote British Columbia Conservative because the 15% that the United have here is going to keep falling. As their voters, because the BC United spend a lot of money, as their voters realize that the ad campaign is not reflective of their support, they will consolidate to the BC Conservatives. The BC Conservatives will have more money than them, and they will out be able to smash probably both the NDP and the United's campaign spending. So just go for the BC Conservatives, I urge you. But things get worse for the BC NDP when you look under the surface of this poll. And I'm going to start off with the less bad one for them. Because in this poll, and this is, again, just all voters, these are people who are leaning one party uh, or decisively in favor of a party or undecided. You'll notice that there's 17% of people still undecided on who they're going to vote for in British Columbia. This means that the BC NDP obviously are not considered like, you know, the biggest guy on the block right now. A lot of people are very unsure about who they want to go for, and there's a lot of votes still up for grabs. But then when we move on to seeing what decided voters think, the BC Conservatives are now at 40%, with Ebby's NDP only at 34%. Even when with Kevin Falconson's United, even if you swap in the name Liberal, because it's the name more people know the United Party by, they still only do 1% better. That is a dead party. It's going absolutely nowhere. And so David Eby is having to rely on some extremely fickle voters in order to win this next election. And does he think he's really going to be able to hold on to them for another six months to actually show up and vote for him when all those voters are planning on voting federal conservative? Because remember, the, the federal conservatives poll, depending on the pollster, anywhere from like 43 to 52% in British Columbia. 
that means for BC, like for a Premier David Eby to win, either he has to be getting every single anti-conservative federal voter to go his way, which is not going to happen because of the United and the Green Party also take some liberal voters in. He is going to have to rely on at least some federal conservative voters. As I said before, it's not going to happen, especially with Pierre Polyev and David Eby feuding. It's not going to happen. It's especially not going to happen because everyone knows that Pierre Polyev is going to be the new prime minister of Canada. And do they really want David Eby there blocking pipelines, holding up federal legislation by not complying on a provincial level and whatnot? No. They're going to want someone who is working well with the new prime minister and somebody who doesn't remind them of Justin Trudeau. And the fact that David Eby is like the only premier next to, I think, is it Anthony Fury? No, not Anthony Fury. It's like, a, whatever, it doesn't matter. Some guy in the Maritimes. The, the fact that David Eby is basically the only prime uh, the premier in the country upholding his provincial carbon tax means that he actually tracks very closely to Justin Trudeau for people. He's not like Wab Canoe in Manitoba, where he, even though he's NDP and the liberals federally are in coalition with the NDP, he seems like a populist left figure who's very different from Justin Trudeau. He's the type of guy on the side of the road who's changing his own tire, wearing a suit, and he seems like the sort of like non-stuck-up corporate type guy like Justin Trudeau is. David Eby is very much like Justin Trudeau. He's very obsessed with having fashionable, pol ha fashionable policy rather than good policy. That's exactly what's underlying all the policies like the drug decriminalization, safe supply, SOGI 123, creating the bubble zones around abortion clinics. All this stuff is just things that David Eby supports because it's fashionable. He is still an anti-police guy, a defund the police guy. He literally wrote books on how to sue the police in small claims courts on frivolous grounds and win money. The man is a complete clown and a radical. And so in BC, the Conservatives are going to end up winning all those moderate middle-class voters who want to see tax reform. They want to see the healthcare system fixed. They don't care about throwing away their votes to protect a dream that somehow, if we spend enough money on safe supply, we're going to get all the drug addicts off the street and everyone's going to clean themselves up because a social worker came by and gave them a pamphlet at their tent. It's not going to happen. David E.B. will basically destroy this province. And for the good of the rest of the country, if BC voters throw at the NDP and they vote British Columbia Conservatives, they will make sure that the flow of hyper-progressive far-left policy stops flowing from British Columbia into the rest of the country. Because BC, under the NDP and the Liberals before them, were like the experimental hyper-progressive part of the country where every single bad idea was put into policy and eventually adopted on the federal level by Justin Trudeau. We can stop this flow by getting rid of the NDP and David Eby. Anyways, so this is all great news. Again, vote BC Conservatives if you're in that province. I expect that in the next poll, we're going to see that David Eby's personal approval rating start turning south on him and that the only stronghold he's going to have left is the most downtown parts of Vancouver because he can't survive forever being a complete radical clown, assuming that you're not going to have an actual opposition to run against in the next federal election. Anyways, well, if you guys live in the riding of Calgary, Signal Hill, in my city of Calgary, straight west of the city center, I'm running for the Conservative Party nomination for Calgary, Signal Hill. If you live in this area, buy a membership and visit my website, wyattclaypool.com. Or if you don't live in my riding or if you live in British Columbia, you can also donate to our legal fund, which is in the Give, Send, Go link in the description below. We're being sued by a Chinese billionaire developer for defamation that he cannot prove and has not provided any evidence to prove in over two years of this case gone going. We paid more than $29,000 defending ourselves against him. So anything you can contribute actually really helps us reduce the burden of costs on ourselves so we can put more money towards not only living life and not putting every cent we earn into the lawsuit, but also reinvesting in the National Telegraph. Have a good one, everyone.